In 2013, the world's most expensive burger was priced a staggering 300,000 US dollars, and the man who consumed it was Sergey Brin, the co-founder of Google. The biggest reason that the burger was so heftily priced was because the burger was made out of meat that was cultivated in a laboratory as opposed to the traditional form of meat which comes from animal rearing. Many of us are queasy about thinking how our meat comes in our table. Most of the times the meat we normally consume comes from factory farms where animals are subjected to inhumane conditions during their lifetime. Besides this, there are also environmental consequences that come about from global meat producing industry. This involves massive emissions of greenhouse gases that is on par with the emissions from transportation services worldwide. In addition, there is also the fact that the nutrient you get out of animal meat such as chicken or a buffalo or a pig or any other animal is considerably lower than the nutrient that goes into the animal. Since there are more than a billion animals reared for meat consumption, the amount of food waste from animal rearing is exorbitant. There are plenty of research conducted which show that the food which is being served for animal rearing is also fomenting world hunger as the price of grain is increasing in the base level. These animals also tend to consume gallons upon gallons of water every day, which results in an unbelievable amount of water wasted in this industry. And this in a time when global water scarcity is increasing every year. Typically, it takes about 5,000 gallons of water to produce one pound of beef. Producing one pound of wheat, in comparison, only takes 25 gallons. Now multiply these by a factor of billion to get a scale of water that is wasted on animals every year. A few months ago, we were saddened by the fact that the Amazon rainforest had lost much of its valuable land, and this was down to a forest fire. The erosion of such forests lead to a worldwide climate change. But not many people know that huge areas of the Amazon rainforest are being slashed every year just to get clear land where animals for the meat industries can be raised. Due to such problems, the idea of cultured meat, like the one which made up the world's most expensive burger, is gaining currency. A study in 2011 claimed that the production of cultured meat could cut down greenhouse emissions by as much as 96% and consume up to 96% less water than the traditional way of producing meat. But what exactly is cultured meat? Cultured meat is laboratory grown meat that involves a sophisticated process known as cellular agriculture. In plant agriculture you take a seed, sow it and under proper nourishment of soil coupled with good environmental conditions, you see a proliferation of a plant whose seed can be used indefinitely to produce larger and larger stacks of food. In a similar manner, in cellular agriculture, what you do is take a cell from the body of an animal, nourish it under sophisticated laboratory conditions that mimic how these cells grow inside the body of an animal and produce meat for consumption. So the first step involves taking muscle sample from the animal whose meat we want to culture. So for example, a cow's sample can be taken after its biopsy is conducted under anesthesia. Then comes the separation of the stem cells from all other muscle components. These stem cells that are isolated are called myosatellite cells, which when inside the body of animals, help to replenish muscle tissue in case of any injury. Scientists make the use of this property of self-renewal of the stem cells to make cultured meat. These myosatellite cells are then kept in a medium that is nutrient-rich along with growth factors which are protein that help in various cellular processes like survival, proliferation, migration as well as its differentiation. The condition of oxygen regulated and the temperature at which the process takes place mimic the conditions that you would find inside the body of an animal. This allows the cells to undergo an exponential growth before these turn into a muscle. All of it sounds fairly simple, but remember that the first pound of cultured meat cost 1.2 million US dollars in 2013. However, the prices have plummeted in recent times, with Memphis Meat reporting the prices to be under 9,000 US dollars per pound in 2017. Over the next 12 months, the price has decreased nine times. In 2019, Aleph Farms announced that the price of beef patty was around $100 per pound. By 2021, the price of cultured meat might be as low as $10 per patty. Despite improvements in affordability, there are still a few issues that need to be addressed before cultured meat becomes mainstream. The first and foremost is getting the texture right, as cultured meat in its current form is only about 60-70% to 70 as good as that of animal meat. 
Much of cultured meat is currently available in the form of nuggets and patties, and it might be a few years to a few decades before we can get an exact replica of the type of meat we get from animals from cellular agriculture. The other big problem with cultured meat is changing people's perception about it. In many surveys conducted, people regarded cultured meat as a way of interfering with nature, or as is the expression, playing God. Besides, there are already names like frankenfood or freakish or weird that are being touted due to its unnaturalness, which might be the biggest hurdle even if we get the texture of cultured meat right. Some even claim that if cultured meat would go mainstream, this might start a wave of meat consumption where cannibalism becomes accepted if muscle cells from humans can be extracted, multiplied and consumed without any harm to people from whom such cells are extracted. Also, there is the huge issue of regulation that makes people reticent about cultured meat. People wonder if they're going to be served lab-grown meat instead of traditional meat if proper regulations are not set about, which is why there are also problems with the nomenclature of cultured meat. Should it be called lab-grown meat, clean meat, cultured meat, or should a new term be introduced, or should it simply be called meat? It will take some time before researchers and lawmakers get around a few of these problems and artificial meat becomes mainstream. But these are exciting times for researchers to find answers to the problems that still surround it. And if the prices are even a tad higher than traditional meat, if people weigh up the severe environmental costs of factory farming, they might be likely to try cultured meat. However, the biggest challenge of it all might be to swiftly move traditional farmers who have spent their lives in livestock rearing into decent jobs in case cultured meat becomes mainstream soon.